So our economics assessment process, which I'll develop, which I'll show you here, basically allows you to answer these kinds of questions. I'll let you read them. But I'll also mention that the penultimate one here is really important in business. What is a reasonable amount of money to spend on sustainability? Because often we're told or regulated that we must do a certain thing. Now, in carbon, so far, we're not being regulated. Well, it's voluntary in Brazil, and in most parts of the world, it's still voluntary. So the question becomes, what's a reasonable amount of money to spend on managing carbon or managing sustainability as a whole? The question becomes, then, is that we all know how to figure out how much stuff costs. But nobody ever tells us the value that we're getting from doing it. Benefit must be measured against cost. Cost alone tells you nothing. It just tells you what's cheapest. It doesn't tell you if it's better. And I hate to throw an equation at you, but uh, here we go. This is the net present value equation. So anybody who's in business uh, knows this. It's basically the equation that rules the world. Every decision that's made in business is made eventually by the accountants and the boards of directors based on this. And it basically says that the net present value or the profit from a particular project or my company is the sum of the benefits of the project, B, minus the cost of the project, C, given some discount rate, value times time value for money, over a period of time, T. Now, conventionally, what we'll do is we'll look at the benefits of the project, how much money I get from selling uh, my power, or how much money I get from selling my ore concentrate, and the cost of the project. What does it cost me to build the facility and run it? And if the B is bigger than the C, and NPV is positive, my project is NPV positive, I go ahead and I do it. I'm making more money than I'm spending. Simple. But I think we all know that there are other things that are going on when I build my project. If I'm building my project up in Amazonia, I might be clearing land. I might be destroying biodiversity. If I'm building an offshore uh, oil and gas complex in Australia, and I'm putting it on top of a coral reef, and I have to basically dredge the coral reef, eliminate it, kill it, to build a facility, then there's a cost. There's a damage. The company might not have to pay for it directly, but society has to pay for it. It loses something. We all know that. You can put that in here, too. External costs, CX, and external benefits, benefits that accrue to society, to the people around the project, from doing the project, these also matter. There's more going on than just us. We know that, but we can bring it in to our accounting system. So all of a sudden, if we can put dollar values on these things, what we have is an NPV that is the real total effect of everything that we're doing because of that project. Everything. Not just my piece as BP or Shell or whoever, but society plus BP or Shell or Exxon. Everybody. Because I, I'm sure that in your own personal experience, you know that there's places in the world where actually the external costs of environmental and social damage are greater than the profits that the company makes. The company still makes the profits, but in China, for instance, where I've done quite a bit of work, you'll see many examples of projects where the company has made a profit, but in doing so, for instance, they've contaminated the river killed all the fish, they're causing serious health damage for the villagers down, downstream, and this is one particular issue that I'm thinking of, and the value of that damage is greater than the profits made by the company. So the total net picture for society, for China as a whole, for running that particular industry is negative. Everybody as a whole is worse off. That's irrational. The economist's definition of economic is the maximization of human welfare. So thank you very much, and uh, I'd be very, very happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Obrigado.
Very good presentation. Uh, I'd like to know what kind of indicators and how do you measure in, on the society perspective the development of such projects on society? Let's say that you are earning 130 million for a combination of projects. What will be the real effect on regional development of those projects? What kind of indicators do you use? Or do you rely on human development index or any other kinds of indicators of development? Or you are just uh, looking at the social, environmental, and sustainable uh, assessment from the perspective, from the business perspective of the company? Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. Um, the answer is that uh, no. What we try to do is look at the full overall picture. So many, most of our customers at the moment are private sector. So they have a specific issue that they're interested in looking at, and they want to understand what the external costs and benefits to society are from doing their project. So we'll totalize all of that. And if that includes a development component, then we, we examine that development component by looking at some quantitative, not indices, but quantitative issues. So right now, for instance, in Australia, we're doing some work around um, development in, in the Aboriginal areas of Australia. So we have Aboriginals. And there's a, a big issue around how they might be affected by development. So it's, uh, it, we look at health and jobs and income and those kinds of things. So we look at specific metrics, not indices, because this is all based on quantifying the issue and then putting dollar values around it. So it's got nothing to do with indices and weighting. That's all out, all gone. Um, so uh, other customers, for instance, the World Bank at the moment, we're using this approach at the current time to look at a series of countries' energy planning going forward 40 years. So to 2050, for Uzbekistan, project we're doing right now, what's the best combination of various types of power generation to meet their growing power demand for their projected population and, and, uh, and uh, economic development scenarios in the specter of a changing climate and pricing on carbon? So what's the best mix of energy? So that needs to look at uh, the whole country's development. So the answer is yes. Uh, it's quantitatively based. We don't use indices per se. Uh, 